We have been working to address the fact that underprivileged women in our community have had extremely limited access to female hygiene products. With our work, not only have we given back to women in our community, but we have also brought awareness to people everywhere on different kinds of platforms. And to give a little background, here is how the lack of feminine hygiene products affect women everywhere. On average, an individual woman spends over $7,000 on feminine hygiene items such as pads, tampons, panty liners, and more. One in three women are homeless, and the vast majority of those women in homeless shelters have no means to access hygienic supplies. Women resorting to using dirty socks, napkins, and other dangerous material as a substitute for what they really need, clean and sanitary pads or tampons. To introduce our problems and our efforts to solve it, we first turn to our fellow ladies at camps. The Girls Build LA Summit was an open field trip to all female identifying students. Because of this, it has put a privileged women at high risk for dangerous diseases. After speaking to those who attended, we saw a great increase in female empowerment and found ways to advertise our product to multiple classes. Throughout these past few months, we have held in-class presentations to bring awareness to ongoing issues that correlate with ours, such as how the pink tax placed on female hygiene products have contributed to the lack of access. By taking surveys before and after these presentations, we noticed that over 85% of the people didn't know what the pink tax was and how it has affected our community. In addition, we saw that 50% of those students didn't even know how significant the issue of the lack of access to female products is in our community. During these presentations, we informed not only the people about the pink tax, but how these issues have emotionally impacted women. In our surveys, we saw that nearly 50% of the girls were ashamed of sharing anything about their period because others have looked down on it as society as a disgusting nature. The need for girls in STEM is so important to us as a math and science school. Integrating our own curriculum with concepts such as the pink tax as well as hygiene was an important aspect of our health project. This leads into our next project as a group, our school-wide STEM symposium. Being the first of its kind at our school, we worked to present our issue to the other schools, school facility, and visitors who came to learn more about our booth. We presented ideas and related research to our issue and examined short and long term consequences on our community as well as methods of resolving these issues. Such as repealing the pink tax, implementing free hygiene product machines in local areas and more. With the help of our team <laughs> at the symposium, we knew that there had to be an expansion of our audience. After seeing such a positive effect in our school, we prepared for our next project. We teamed up with another group at our school, the American Red Cross, to hold a two-week long donation drive. Over a hundred hygiene products such as pads, deodorant, tissues, tampons, and more. With additional resources, we were able to make over 120 care packages, all that were donated to the Women's Shelter of Long Beach. From this experience, we learned what it was like to actually act upon an issue and do something that would greatly benefit women in our community. Lastly, we use social media to our advantage to spread to hundreds about how significant the issue is. We provided ways as to how people can contribute to help resolve the issue. On Instagram, we promoted a petition that would repeal the pink tax in all states of the U.S., in which we were able to add a little over 50 signatures. In addition, some girls of our group participated in major events in our community to support social movements such as March for Our Lives. We also plan to find ways to bring awareness to more and more people, specifically teenagers, about our issue and how it's impacted our community. Lastly, we plan to become stronger and work harder as a group to innovate and create new projects that will help us give back to underprivileged women and girls through, all throughout our society. With the help of our advisor, Ms. Davis, we were able to constantly hold meetings and have support whenever we needed it. In addition, the work that we have all put in together and as individuals have helped us learn how to be more organized, confident, prepared, among other things. We also learned how to work with other groups and organizations to hold major events in order to reach out to our targeted audience. With our work, we were able to reach out to hundreds of students and adults, bringing them awareness of our issue and inspiring them to take action and stand with us to help resolve and give back to the underprivileged women in our community. We were able to help over 120 women in need at the Women's Shelter of Long Beach with a care package product. And we were able to learn more about how our issue is seen through the community by conducting surveys and reaching out to more than 200 people. Lastly, we learned more about what it means to work in a team and how each of us are vital to the success of our entire group. Without any of these girls, we wouldn't have obtained the success that we have today in working on this project. Together, we have power. And together, we, we are ladies! ladies.